Hey guys, this is Mannequin. Today I want to talk about ground loops in your studio and how you can try to fix them. So if you don't know what a ground loop is, basically when you connect a whole bunch of different electronics, you could end up with some electrical issues that are caused by electricity kind of tra traveling between the different devices and causing some noise. So the classic example of what a ground loop sounds like is the 60 cycle hum, but there are actually other types as well. So I'm gonna give you different examples that you might not necessarily associate with a ground loop, but are actually caused by ground loops in your system. So in a studio, ground loops are a much bigger problem than when you just have a normal at-home setup because if only you can hear the ground loop, then it's fine. But if it somehow starts to make its way into your recordings, then it becomes a problem because now everybody that listens to the tracks you're working on are going to hear those sounds as well. And that's extremely annoying and it's not just something that you will have to deal with, it's something that other people will have to hear as well. So we want to eliminate all ground loops, not just because they're annoying to us, but because we don't want them to potentially affect our recordings or mask other noise sources that might be in our recordings. So now that we know what a ground loop sounds like, how do we go in and fix it? Now, unfortunately, that's the hard part and that's the part that I can't really help you with. I can give you a bit of a guideline on how you would tackle the problem, but it 100% depends on what you have set up and how you have things connected. So I'm just gonna give you one brief example and that's the basic setup where you have a desktop, an audio interface, and some studio monitors. So imagine you have that set up, and whenever you open an application that hits the GPU pretty hard, you start to hear a whine amplified through your studio monitors. So the first thing I would try to do to diagnose this is I would disconnect the studio monitor from the audio interface, but leave it powered on and plugged in. Now, if that gets rid of all the noise, that doesn't necessarily mean we have a ground loop. It could be caused by some sort of poor electrical shielding in the audio interface or the computer. So what would the next step be? Well, what I would do is I would take a laptop and connect it to the audio interface and then connect the speakers back up. If I don't hear any of that coil whine sound, then that means that it's probably some sort of ground loop coming between my speakers and my computer. Now the key word there, unfortunately, is probably. You really have to try to get rid of these ground loops before you understand if they are really ground loops. So now that you know what a ground loop sounds like and how you would try to find one in your setup, how do you actually resolve it and get rid of it? So before I get into the actual products that I wanna talk about today, I wanna to talk about the two types of ways you can address a ground loop. The first is by doing something called lifting the ground on something. And what that means is you basically drop the ground pin on an XLR cable or a power cable or somewhere throughout the system um, so that you don't have that same ground as it's called, that same electrical connection going to earth to prevent this ground loop from occurring. Now, I haven't personally had a lot of success with that method. It is technically a solution that can work in some cases, so it's worth pointing out. Also, this solution does not affect audio quality at all. So in the cases where it works, and it's safe, because it's not always safe, this is actually the best solution. But I would like to reemphasize, it is not always safe. The second way to isolate a ground loop is by having transformers in between the two sources that electrically isolate the two sides of the connection. The way this works is basically you have an incoming signal and then a device in the middle that produces that same identical signal on the outside, but it doesn't actually create a wire between the two that would cause a ground loop. Now, the big problem with these is if you do something like put this in the audio connection between your audio interface and your studio monitors, what it can do is it can introduce harmonic distortion and in other ways, change a sound signature. This will be very important as we look at the different products. Now with that said, if you get a good enough one, it should be negligible enough to where it will not bother you or affect the sound too much. But for the purists out there, keep in mind, if you want the perfect representation of what is coming out of your audio interface, you cannot put an inline transformer in between your audio interface and your studio monitors to address the ground loop. Now, unfortunately, that means you might not actually be able to address the ground loop in your system if that is the only way to address that particular problem you're having. So now that all the lead up information is done, 
Let's actually talk about the different solutions I tried. So the first product we want to talk about was meant to address the ground loop between my studio monitors and my desktop. So this is a ground lift adapter by Hosa that is supposed to disconnect the ground pin from one side to the other side. Now, in theory, what this would do is detach the ground between my studio monitors and my audio interface, and that would let the signal pass through without having the same ground between them where electricity could be carried over. Now, the problem with this adapter is it is manufactured incorrectly. Basically, if you see those two screws there, those two screws are connected to the same outer housing and the ground pin on either side of this is connected to the screws. So what this means is this is effectively a uh, female to male coupler that does nothing because XLR cables are female to male. So this is absolutely useless as is. Now with that said, I wanted to get my money's worth out of it. So I popped this open and I disconnected the wire that was on either connector side um, that actually connected the housing to the ground of each side. And it did become a ground lift. Unfortunately, this wasn't sufficient in my experience. It didn't actually address the ground loop between my studio monitors and my computer. Now, my guess as to why this is, is because you have the two other pins that are still electrical connections between the two devices. So electricity can still be carried through those devices and find the ground some other way. Now that's my guess, but it's not an actual technical explanation, but basically this is useless. Don't buy this because it is wired incorrectly. And unless you want to rewire it, at which point you could just get two XLR connectors and then wire them yourself, um, it is no better than a placebo. Now, unfortunately, that was the only thing I tried that actually lifted the ground. Everything else I tried was an isolation transformer, but that's not all bad news, and we'll get into that in a second. So the first isolation transformer I picked up was this MPOW adapter, and it's basically 3.5 millimeter stereo to 3.5 millimeter stereo, and all you do is you connect one end to your audio interface and one end to your studio monitors, and it gets rid of the ground loop. Now, the primary reason I got this was to diagnose things. And I wanted to try to figure out if I had ground loops in various parts of my system. So I popped this in and it did work. It actually helped me find out where all my ground loops are. So it was great in that sense. Now, unfortunately, this little adapter has one major flaw and that is it is not designed for studio use. The power levels that this adapter expects are consumer levels, not professional audio levels. And if you send the professional audio levels through this adapter, what will happen is you'll get horrible distortion. If you start at a low level and then slowly bring it up, you might not notice at first how much you're starting to distort the audio. So what may happen is you'll start to creep into audio levels that professional audio equipment can handle, but this little adapter can't, and it'll start to introduce clipping before you get to the other side of the cable. So basically this will help you find ground loops, but it won't really help you fix them permanently. Um, so I would suggest if you are using this for studio equipment that you avoid this. If you just want consumer equipment going through this uh, this adapter, then it should be okay. But I would suggest you go for something that's designed to be a little bit more robust because the price is not that far off anyway. Speaking of something that's a little bit more robust, we have the PHE 300. So this one is uh, same general idea. You have transformers in between either end and you could send a stereo signal through it. The key difference is this one actually works at professional audio levels. So I have two of these now that I'm using for two different ground loops in my system and they have worked very well. And the sound effect that they have is relatively minor. Now, one thing to point out though, is this does invert the phase. So if you have one speaker going in through this and another speaker not going in through this, you will actually have weird phasing issues and everything will sound super off because uh, there's an inversion of phase. This also introduces a small amount of harmonic distortion, um, but we'll talk about that later and it's not super audible. So for some of you, I'm sure you're thinking about, well, even though this is pretty good, it's not the solution that you want ideally. Now for the audio purists, maybe this will be exactly what you're looking for. This is a transformer based solution as well, but the difference is it's USB to USB. So you might be wondering why on earth would you want something like this? Well, first of all, it can't affect audio quality because only digital signals pass through this. Second of all, your ground loop might actually not be located in your audio chain. It might be from something like what I had. I had two desktops that were connected to a USB switch. So all I had to do was put this in between the switch and one of the computers and everything was hunky dory. 
Now, this does also have one fatal flaw, and that is it doesn't run at full USB 2.0 speeds. If you want USB 2.0 or even USB 3.0, you have to spend a lot more to get an isolation transformer that could run at those speeds. This was pretty cheap. It worked for what I needed because basically all I had was a mouse and a keyboard on the other side of this. Now, before we go, what I want to do is I want to do a quick demo to show what the sound difference is between having no inline transformer from your audio interface to your speaker versus putting one there and seeing how it affects the audio quality. So to simulate this, instead of having a microphone setup, all I did was I took my audio interface and I did a loopback, which is I took the output and I sent it into one of the mics as an input. So after I connected that up, I did two things. The first thing I did was I popped open Room EQ Wizard and got some measurements. So as you can see, for the plain old loopback, this is what it looks like when we send a one kilohertz sine wave through the microphone input. Now, when we put the pile adapter through, you start to see that there's a little bit of a spike that indicates there is some harmonic distortion. If we look at the MPOW adapter, you'll notice there's two spikes, and the first spike is actually much higher than it was before. If you aren't familiar with what this means when we're looking at a frequency spectrum here, basically that means that there are overtones that are generated by the transformer when we send a one kilohertz signal through it. Ideally, we shouldn't see these. We should just see the one kilohertz spike and nothing else other than maybe the noise floor. I did try to run some Match EQ plugins over the audio samples I recorded, but I couldn't see any meaningful difference between the frequency spectrum. There wasn't like a dip anywhere or a fall off in the high frequency or low frequency. Mostly it was just some jitter throughout the entire frequency spectrum. So obviously a transformer won't be perfect, but from a frequency response perspective, it was relatively negligible. Everything well under one dB. So finally, we have some audio samples to listen to that'll let you hear what it sounds like when you have a regular loop back versus throwing one of these ground loop isolators in between. So in terms of the things we looked at, don't buy the Hosa adapter, it doesn't do anything. The MPOW adapter is okay, but it's not really designed for studio uses. So if you wanna just throw it in your car or something, it could be sufficient, but probably not something you wanna use in your studio. The Pile PHE 300 worked really well for me, and I suggest you pick it up as something to use for diagnosing your issues and seeing if you need an isolation transformer. And finally, the USB ground loop isolator worked really well, but it has much more limited use cases since you could only put it in between something that is a low speed USB connection. So yeah, that's all I got on ground loops for now. Uh, I think in a later video, maybe someday I'll test like the audio quality differences between uh, different ground loop isolators that are designed for audio. Cause one of the unfortunate things about these different products is they don't really list ratings on how much distortion they introduce. So you might be buying something that's more expensive thinking it's better, but you have no idea since they haven't actually reported any measurements on how much distortion is introduced and how it might affect the frequency response. But that's for another video. This is all I have for you today. If this was helpful, please like the video so you don't lose it. And uh, I'll probably do more measurement related things in the future. I think the technical side of audio definitely fascinates me. And if that sort of stuff interests you too, consider subscribing. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.